know about you, but I am cold this time of year. So, let's make some soup. We'll throw in a bunch of ingredients that will boost your immune system while we're at it. Okay, starting off, I'm gonna put some lentils in here to cook. I've got a mix of different types of lentils. You could use split peas, you could use split red lentils. This is a mix of split red lentils, green lentils, and tiny little black lentils. So I'm cooking these on their own because I don't want to put any salt in until after these lentils are fully cooked. So what I'm going to do is just leave these to simmer and trick number one, boil the water before you put it in the pot. Boil it in your kettle, it'll happen really quick and then this will come to a boil really quickly. Trick number two, put some seasoning in the water with your lentils and they will absorb that seasoning right into themselves. No salt, but a little bit of seasoning. And we're using curry powder in this recipe, so that's what I'm putting in with my lentils. So I'll put the lid on. As soon as that boils, turn it down to simmer. While that's going, I'm gonna saute some vegetables in a large soup pot. Now you can saute this with coconut oil, which is lovely, or you can water saute like I'm gonna do today. Starting off with some onion, base of all good soups. This is a pretty hefty onion, so I'm gonna cut it in half. And I like using red onion for this recipe, but you can use any kind of onion you prefer. So we'll take the skin off here. Okay, so turn this pot on to high, get a little bit of water if you're water sauteing. You could use vegetable broth, you could use coconut oil, like I said, you could use olive oil too. And then we'll slide these chopped onions into the pot. Good to start them off with a little bit of sea salt so that they start to soften and cook properly. All right. The secret of saving time in the kitchen while you're cooking is to chop things as you go. So rather than spending 20 minutes chopping vegetables up beforehand, I just start with the first vegetable I'm going to put in. While that's cooking, I'm chopping up the next one, which for us is going to be ginger. Now take off as little of the skin as possible. I've heard people say that a the back of a spoon works better, to be honest. I've never had any ginger that's soft enough to be able to do that. So if anyone has any tips, let me know. Till then, I'm gonna continue chopping it with a knife and then just mince this up as small as you can. Now, ginger is a great one to do in winter because it brings a lovely flavor, particularly to this curry seasoned soup that we're doing, uh, but it's also warming. Garlic is cooling where ginger is warming. Toss it in with the onions. Stir it around to combine. And while those cook, we move on to our next vegetable, which is sweet potato. Some of you might now be looking at me saying, oh my God, why is your sweet potato white on the inside? Well, I'm glad you asked. Some people call the orange ones yams. They're not actually yams. Yams is a totally different vegetable that grows in tropical climates. So both orange and white varieties are sweet potatoes. Go with whichever one you like. This is the only one that was in the store today, so that's what I've got. The orange one will have a little bit more vitamin C. Might need to add a bit more water if you're water sautéing. That's why I keep the kettle handy. Uh, so orange sweet potatoes might have a little bit more vitamin C, vitamin A than the white ones because they are orange. That orange pigment means that there are certain vitamins and phytonutrients in the vegetable. But white sweet potatoes, still fantastic. All right. A little more water in there, a little more sea salt, because now we've got lots of sweet potatoes in there, so the salt needs to help all of those sweet potatoes soften up. And I'm now gonna put in 
enough water to cover all of these vegetables along with more curry powder. Oh, forgot one vegetable, zucchini. This one, I'm gonna do about half. This one doesn't need to cook as much, so it doesn't go in when you're sauteing. You can just put it in after the fact. All right, that is looking hearty and yummy. So I'm going to put the lid on, turn it down to medium low, and let it simmer. While those two are simmering away, you can chop up your last veggie, which is gonna be some fresh spinach. Mm, yeah. And that's gonna get stirred in right at the end, just to wilt it a little bit. But we can cut it up now so it's all ready to go. So let's see how things are doing in here. This looks nice. You can test if your sweet potato is done by just seeing if a knife goes into it easily, softly. It does. Excellent. Check our lentils. I think those look done. Yeah, no water left. Okay, so. Here's how we finish this off. We take the lentils, put them in the soup. You don't have to put all of them in if it looks like too much for you. You can save these lentils and put them in a salad or a bowl with warm veggies. I think that looks like just a perfect amount. Then stir in your spinach. You can turn both of these off. And then if you stir it in, it'll just wilt from the heat of the rest of the soup. It doesn't need to cook. That's all it needs. For those of you who like an extra flavor boost like I do, we're gonna take some miso. Nobody is allowed to comment on what this looks like as I'm squeezing it out of the package. Then we're gonna take some of this warm water, not boiling, but hot water, and just stir this to dissolve that miso. I like to press it against the side of the cup. Whatever you do, dissolve it fully because trust me, you do not want a big mouthful of miso in the middle of your soup. So that is dissolved. Miso will add a nice rich flavor, boost the saltiness, which helps the flavor of the soup come together overall. So if you're not using this, you might need a bit more salt than I've used. And then we're gonna boost the flavor a little bit more with some toasted sesame oil. Also optional, this is your bonus flavor pack. So just stir that together and then mix it into your soup. Then here's another secret tip. You can use your measuring cup as a soup ladle if you want to minimize dishes. So get a scoop in a bowl and then you can top it off with a little sprinkle of sesame seeds. Gives a nice contrast, looks pretty, plus adds some calcium, some vitamin E to your bowl. Voila! So good, so good. Hope you enjoy the soup. Leave me a thumbs up if you like this recipe. If you wanna learn more about how to make the perfect soup every single time, link down below the video. You can also leave a comment if you have any questions or if you wanna add something to this soup when you make it, let me know. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every week with vegan recipes, nutrition tips, and inspiration. So click subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye guys. A vegan no kaye, 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 vegan no kaye.